ओम भूरभुव स्वह तुरवरेण्यम भर्गो देवश्रदीम धियो नचोदया शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर टेन ऑन टीचिंग्स ऑफ लॉर्ड कपिला दिस वीडियो स्टार्ट्स विद चैप्टर सेवन टेक्स्ट नंबर ट्वेल्व लॉर्ड कपिला बिगिन्स टू एक्सप्लेन सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन मैत्रेया उवाचा इति स्वामतुर निर्वदयम इप्सितम निस्मया पुंसम अपवर्गा वर्धनम धिया भी आनंदया मानतम सतम गतिर भाबशा इसत समिता शोभिता अनाह means after hearing of his mother's uncontaminated desire for transcendental realization the lord thanked her within himself for her questions and thus his face smiling he explained the path of the transcendentalists who are interested in self realization purport Devahuti has surrendered her confession of material entanglement and her desire to gain release her questions to lord kapila are very interesting for persons who are actually trying to get liberation from material entanglement and attain perfection unless one is interested in understanding his spiritual life or his constitutional position and unless he also feels in convenience in material existence his human form of life is spoiled only a foolish man does not care for the transcendental necessities of life and simply engages like an animal in eating sleeping defending and mating Lord Kapila was very much satisfied by his mother's questions because the answers were the answers stimulate one's desire for liberation from the conditional life of material existence such questions are called apvarka vardhanam those who are actually spiritually interested are called satya or devotees satam prasangat sat means that which eternally exist and asat means that which is not eternal unless one is situated on the spiritual platform he is not sat he is asat the asat stands on a platform which will not exist but anyone who stands on the spiritual platform will exist eternally as spirit soul everyone exist eternally but the asat has accepted the material world as his shelter and therefore he is full of anxiety asad grahan asad grahan the desire to enjoy matter is the cause of the soul's being a sat actually the spirit soul is not a sat as soon as one is conscious of this fact and takes to krishna consciousness he becomes sat satam gati the path of the eternal is very interesting to persons who are after liberation and his lordship kapila began to speak about that path those who are sat are thus transcendentalists advanced in spiritual life and when they hear questions from those who want to understand spiritual life they become very happy transcendentalists are not interested in worldly talks 
Indeed, worldly talks are very disgusting to them, and they avoid the company of those who talk about nonsensical worldly affairs. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised his disciples, Gramya Katha Na Sunibe. The word Gramya refers to that pertaining to one's village, society, or neighborhood. People are interested in talking about Gramya Katha. Newspapers, for instance, are filled with Gramya Katha. There is no spiritual understanding in them. In the United States, there are many newspapers and simply to publish the New York Times, many trees have to be killed. Now there is a paper scarcity. Why are they uselessly killing trees for the Gramya Katha? They are only interested in making a profit. There is, however, another kind of Katha, Krishna Katha. There are literatures which may be nicely presented from the literary point of view, but if there is no glorification of the Supreme Lord, they are useless. Na yad vachas chitra padam herar harer yaso jagat pavitram pragnita karhichit tad vyasam tiratham ushanti Mansha na yatra hamsha nira manti usik sheha. Those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord, who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe, are considered by saintly persons to be like unto a pilgrimage for crows. Since the all perfect persons are inhabitants of the transcendental abode. They do not derive any pleasure there. That is, this is from Bhagavatam, chapter 1, part 5, stanza number 10. Worldly literatures are like places where crows take pleasures. In the bird society, there are crows and swans. And crows are interested in places where filthy things are thrown. However, swans <coughs> prefer nice clear water with lotus flowers and it is in such places that they take their pleasure. Similarly, there are men who are like crows and men like swans. That is a natural division. According to an old English proverb, birds of a feather flock together. Crows mix with crows and swans mix with swans. Since devotees are like swans, hamsas, a most advanced devotee is called Pramhansa. The Pramhansas are not interested in subjects fit for crows. A person who is interested in inquiring about transcendental subjects, Krishna Katha makes a Pramhansa very glad. Therefore, Kapil Deva was very glad to hear that his mother was eager to receive information on how to be delivered from material bondage. Athame Deva Samoham Apkarstum Tavam Arhasi Yo Vagraho Ham Mamantiti Etam Sin Yojitsa Tavya. Now be pleased, my Lord, to dispel my great delusion. Due to my feeling of false ego, I have been engaged by your Maya and have identified myself with the body and consequent bodily relations. This is from Bhagavad. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised his disciples never to eat palatable food, never to talk about village topics, and never to read ordinary novels, poems, and newspapers. One may ask how is it that in the modern age these Europeans and Americans of the Krishna consciousness movement do not take interest in newspapers. Newspapers are very popular in the West. Each day the papers are published in three or four editions and they are all selling. 
However, these Americans, boys and girls who have come to Krishna consciousness have stopped reading newspapers. They do not know what is happening from day to day and it does not matter. All of this is a waste of time. It is better that they read literatures like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Why waste one's valuable time? Kapil Deva was very glad that his mother was interested only in spiritual advancement. This material world is called Pavarga and to nullify it is called a Pavarga. In this material world people are laboring very hard simply to earn some money. This creates a hellish situation and this is the way of material life. People have become so dull that they do not understand the meaning of liberation. They have become just like animals. If an animal is informed that there is such a thing as liberation, how will he understand it? It is not possible. Similarly, at the present moment, human, human beings have become exactly like animals. They do not know the meaning of apavarga, liberation. Yet there was a time when people understood that human life was meant for apavarga. The questions are raised by Devahuti and the answers are given by Kapil Deva. That is apavarga vardhamnam. As far as material maintenance is concerned, the Shastras never stress it. Rather, they say that one's maintenance will come automatically. God gives food to animals, birds and aquatics. Why should he not give it to one who is interested in a pavarga? Unfortunately, people have no faith and therefore good association is required. People should not waste their time associating with pros. They should associate with the swans. When garbage is thrown out, crows and dogs come to see what is there, but no sane man will go. Those who are interested in trying to get pleasure out of this material world are actually chewing the chewed. Punah punaz charvita charvanam charvananam. This is from Bhagavat. If one picks up a piece of sugar cane which has already been chewed, he is a fool. We must know that the juice has already been taken out of that sugar cane. What will one get by chewing it? However, there are animals who are simply interested in chewing the chewed. Material life means chewing the chewed. A father educates his son to earn a livelihood, get married and settle down, but he himself already knows that by doing this he has not become satisfied. Why then is he engaging his son in the same business? A real father is one who does not allow his son to chew the chewed. Pita na sa sayaj janani na sa sayati. Na Machayad Yaha Samupeta Mertyum. One should not become a father or mother unless one is able to save his children from the impending clutches of death. This is from Bhagavat. That is the duty of the father and mother. How can this be done? A father and mother should educate their son in Krishna consciousness. Then he can be saved. They should educate the son in such a way that there is no pavarga. If we do not go forward to liberation, we promote a civilization of cats and dogs. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending, fearing and dying are all experienced by cats and dogs. But human life is meant for another purpose. Of course, we have to maintain the body. 
it is not that we should neglect it but we should not unnecessarily engage in the maintenance of the body ya satma buddhi hi kuna petrai dhatuke swadhi kalatra disu bhom ijja dhihi yat tirtha buddhi hi salilena karhichit जनेसु अभिजनेसु सा एवा खराहा ए ह्यूमन बीइंग हु आइडेंटिफाइज दिस बॉडी मेड ऑफ थ्री एलिमेंट्स एज द सेल्फ हु कंसीडर्स द बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द बॉडी टू बी हिज किंजमैन हु कंसीडर्ड द लैंड ऑफ हिज बर्थ एज वर्शिप वर्सिपेबल एंड हु गोज टू ए प्लेस ऑफ पिलग्रीमेज सिंपली टू टेक ए बाथ रादर देन मीट मैन ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज देयर इज टू बी कंसिडर्ड लाइक ए काउ और एन एस दिस इज फ्रॉम भागवत फ्रॉम द वेदास वी कैन रिसीव एजुकेशन ऑफ ऑल काइंड ऑन ए मैंगो ट्री देर आर राइपंड मैंगोज एंड ग्रीन मैंगोज Dri Sri Mat Bhagavatam is the ripened mango of the desire tree of Vedic knowledge. Nigma Kalpa Tarar Galitam Phalam. If the mango is tasted by the parrot, it becomes doubly tasty. The word Sukha means parrot, and Sukdeva Goswami spoke Sri Mat Bhagavatam. It is therefore more rarely shivel from his lips. निगम कल्पा तरर गलितम फलम शुका मुखद अमृता ध्रुवा संयुतम पिबता भागवतम रसम अलायम मुहुर एहो रसिका भुवि भवुत कहा ओ एक्सपर्ट एंड थॉटफुल मैन रैली श्री मद भागवतम द मेच्योर फ्रूट ऑफ द desire tree of vedic literature it emanated from the lips of sri sukadeva goshwami therefore this fruit has become even more tasteful although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all including liberated souls this is from bhagavad it is regrettable that in india where there is literatures are available people are not interested they are interested in marxist literature but not shrimad bhagavatam and this is india's misfortune when a student hears spiritual subjects attentively the spiritual master becomes very happy Kapil Deva was very happy to see his mother eager to understand spiritual subject matters. He therefore thanked his mother for her enquiry. Generally, people are interested in things that give immediate pleasure. We want to taste something tasty to the tongue, regardless of whether it is edible or not. hogs very readily eat stool and they do so without discrimination they have no idea of tapasya penance when one engages in spiritual realization one has to undergo tapasya however this has been made very easy by chaitanya mahaprabhu cheto darpana marjanam bhava maha dvagni nir nirvapnam all we have to do is spare a little time and chant hare krishna but we are not even ready for this much tapasya krishna is more interested in leading us down the path of liberation than we are in going he has given us a very simple method hare nama hare nama hare na- nama vya kevalam we need only chant hare krishna to perfect this chanting of hare krishna there is no hard and fast rule simply by chanting we will attain perfection being contaminated by kali yuga however we are unfortunate and therefore we have no 
attraction to the holy names of Krishna. Thus, when Kapil Deva or his representative sees someone a little interested, he becomes very glad and thanks him. When Kapil Deva saw his mother interested, he thanked her from within, not openly. Kapil Deva was very glad and he began to speak. Kapil Deva was an incarnation of God and was a young boy. Therefore, his face was very beautiful. When he answered his question, when he answered this question, he became even more beautiful and he smiled because he was pleased at his mother's question. Krishna is also very beautiful, but when a devotee serves him and comes to him, he becomes even more beautiful. When a devotee with all his heart and soul serves Krishna, dresses him in nice garments and gives him a flower, Krishna smiles. If you can get Krishna to smile upon you just once, your, life, your life's goal is fulfilled. Thus smiling, Kapil Deva began to enlighten his mother. Text number 13. Sri Bhagwan Uvacha Yoga Adhya Adhyatmikaha Pumsam Lord Krishna begins to explain self-realization. Mato Nihi Sreya Sayame Atyano Paritit Yatra Dukhasyacha Sukhasyacha Translation the personality of God had answered that yoga system which relates to the Lord and the individual soul which is meant for the ultimate benefit of the living entity and which causes detachment from all happiness and distress in the material world is the highest yoga system purport. In the material world, everyone is striving for some material happiness, but as soon as we get some material happiness, there is also material distress. In the material world, one cannot have unadulterated happiness. Any kind of happiness one has is contaminated by distress also. For example, if you want to drink milk, we have to bother to maintain a cow and keep her fit to supply milk. Drinking milk is very nice, it is also pleasure, but for the sake of drinking milk, one has to accept so much trouble. The yoga system as here stated by the Lord is meant to end all material happiness and material distress. The best yoga as taught in Bhagavad Gita by Krishna is Bhakti Yoga. It is also mentioned in the Gita that one should try to be tolerant and not be disturbed by material happiness or distress. Of course, one may say that he is not disturbed by material happiness, but he does not know that just after one enjoys so-called material happiness, material distress will follow. This is the law of material world. Lord Kapila states that the yoga system is the science of the spirit. One practices yoga in order to attain perfection on the spiritual platform. There is no question of material happiness or distress. It is transcendental. Lord Kapila will eventually explain how it is transcendental, but the preliminary introduction is given here. The attempt in this material world to maximize happiness and minimize distress is called the struggle for existence. Generally, yoga is practiced to acquire some material profit. There are eight kinds of yogic Section Siddhis Anima Laghima Prapati Isitva Vashitva Mahima Prakamya and Kamvasyata. 
a real yogi can become smaller than the smallest lighter than the lightest and bigger than the biggest whatever he wants he can produce immediately in his hand he can even create a planet these are some of the yoga siddhis but here it is stated that the supreme yoga system does not aim at, at material happiness or relief from distress is caused by material inconvenience everyone is trying to get out of material distress and gain some happiness in any case when something is material there is only so called happiness and so called distress for instance there may be fireworks going on and this may be happiness for someone but distress for us some people are thinking that these fireworks are very enjoyable and we are thinking that they are very inconvenient that is the material world on one side there is happiness and on the other side there is distress both happiness and distress are actually illusions in summer water is happiness but in winter it is distress the water is the same but at one time it brings happiness and uh, another time it brings distress when his son son is born he brings happiness but when he dies he brings distress in either case the son is the same this material world is the world of duality and we cannot understand happiness without distress or distress without happiness this is therefore called the relative world spiritual happiness is above these dualities and that spiritual happiness is the perfection of yoga yoga adhyatmikaha yoga is the happiness of the soul and the individual soul can be happy when it is with the super soul the supreme soul nityo nityanam chetna chetna nam there is the supreme soul or the supreme living being and there are many individual souls individual souls beings we are many but the principal living being is one krishna he is the fire and we are the sparks from that fire the sparks are illuminated when they are with the original fire but if these sparks no longer associate with the original fire they are extinguished similarly our real happiness is in enjoying with the spring supreme being happiness is being in his company krishna is not alone but is always with his friends either the gopis or the cow herd boys or with his mother and father we never find krishna alone he may be with radharani or with his devotees he is like a king or president when one says that the king or president is coming it is understood that he is not coming alone he comes with his secretaries ministers and many others the word yoga means connection and atma means soul and sometimes mind or body the material body has nothing to do with the supreme being because the supreme being is completely spiritual he has no material covering one who thinks that krishna the supreme being has a material covering is himself covered by maya krishna does not say that he comes as an ordinary living being rather his advent is totally transcendental janma karma cha me divyam evam yo vitti tattvata this is from bhagavad gita chapter 4 stanza number 4 we therefore have to learn how krishna takes his birth which is not ordinary if it were ordinary why should we observe the janmashtami ceremony his birth is divyam divine everything about krishna is divine and if we think that krishna is like us 
we immediately become moodhas fools in the words of bhagavad gita chapter 9 stanza number 11 अवजंती मम मूढ़ा मानुषिम तनुम असरित परम भवम अजना तो ममा भूता महेश्वरम फूल्स डिराइड मी वेन आई डिसेंड इन द ह्यूमन फॉर्म दे डू नॉट नो माई ट्रांसेंडेंटल नेचर एंड माई सुप्रीम डोमिनियन ओवर ऑल दैट बी एक्चुअली कृष्णा इज द ओरिजिनल सुप्रीम बींग the original spirit soul we are simply minute parts and parcels of krishna if we connect with krishna we are illuminated just as krishna is illuminated if we fall down from krishna our spiritual power and illumination are extinguished the word yoga means connecting or linking with that original source yoga is the sanskrit word meaning connection and yoga means disconnection kapil deva is referred to as bhagwan the supreme personality of god had bhagwan makes no mistake narayana paro vyaktat even sankracharya says that bhagwan narayana does not belong to this material world when we speak of bhagwan or when the shastras refer to bhagwan we refer to him who is above material understanding as stated here sri bhagwan uvacha it does not say vyasadeva uvacha or kapil dev uvacha similarly in bhagavat gita vyasadeva says sri bhagwan uvacha bhagwan refers to him who is above the defects of this material world bhagwan is not subject to the four deficiencies of the living entities being in perfect living entities are illusioned and subject to commit mistakes they also have the tendency to cheat others when one who has no knowledge tries to become a teacher or preacher he is actually cheating others since we ourselves do not possess perfect knowledge we simply try to teach what sri bhagwan says we do not manufacture our own teachings so called scholars and learned men manufacture their own teachings and give their opinions in the west especially we find much philosophical speculation and mental gymnastics but such a philosophy can never be perfect we have to take our ideas from bhagwan then they will be perfect we read bhagavad gita because it is perfect there is no mistake in it there is no illusion in it there is no cheating in it nor is it deluded by one whose senses are imperfect krishna says in bhagavad gita chapter 7 stanza number 26 veda ham samtitani वर्तम मनानी चर्जुना भविष्या चा भूतानी मम तो वेदाना कश्चना ओ अर्जुना एज द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड आई नो एवरी थिंग दैट हैज हैपन्ड इन द पास्ट ऑल दैट इज हैपनिंग इन द प्रेजेंट एंड ऑल थिंग्स दैट आर येट टू कम i also know all living entities but me no one knows god knows everything but we do not know what is god that is our position our position is not knowing ishwaraha sarva bhutanam hriday deshe arjuna tistihi bhagavad gita chapter 18 stanza number 61 Ishvara God Krishna is situated in everyone's heart Sarvashe Chaham Hridayi Sanni Vistaha I have entered into everyone's heart Bhagavad Gita chapter 15 stanza number 15 The supreme lord refers not only to the hearts of human beings but to those of animals and everything 
आनंद परमाणु चैंतरासथम गोविंदम आदि पुरुषम तम अहम भजमी ब्रह्म संहिता चैप्टर 5 स्टेंजर नंबर 35 द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज विद इन द एटम एज परमात्मा एंड देयरफॉर ही इज आल्सो विद इन द इंडिविजुअल सोल बीइंग विद इन एवरीथिंग ही नोज एवरीथिंग सिंस ही नोज एवरीथिंग वी हैव टू टेक लेसंस फ्रॉम हिम इफ वी take what bhagwan says as perfect knowledge we receive perfect knowledge for receiving this knowledge there is a disciplic succession parampara which is described in bhagavad gita chapter 4 stanza number 2 evam parampara praptam imam राज सयो विदोहु दिस सुप्रीम साइंस वाज दस रिसीव्ड थ्रू द चेन ऑफ डिस्प्लिक सक्सेशन एंड द सेंटली किंग्स अंडरस्टूड इट इन दैट वे दिस कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस फिलॉसफी इज वेरी इजी बिकॉज वी डू नॉट मैन्युफैक्चर आइडियाज वी टेक द आइडियाज एंड द वर्ड्स डिलीवर्ड बाय द सुप्रीम पर्सन कृष्णा और इज incarnation or representative his representative does not say anything which krishna himself does not say it is very easy to be a representative but one cannot be a representative of krishna if one tries to interpret krishna's words in a whimsical way there is no authority superior to sri krishna and if we stick to this principle we can become gurus we do not need to change our position to become a guru all we have to do is follow in the disciplic succession stemming from sri krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu has advised amra ajnaya guru hana tra e desha chaitanya mahamadhya chapter 7 stanza number 128 chaitanya mahaprabhu instructed people to learn from him and then go teach people within their own villages one may think i am illiterate and have no education i was not born in a very high family how can i become a guru chaitanya mahaprabhu says that it is not very difficult yare dekha tere ka तरे कहा कृष्ण उपदेशा सिंपली स्पीक वॉट एवर कृष्ण स्पीक्स देन यू बिकम ए गुरु हु एवर स्पीक्स वॉट कृष्ण हैज नॉट स्पोकन इज नॉट ए गुरु बट ए रेस्कल ए गुरु ओनली स्पीक्स वॉट कृष्ण हैज स्पोकन दिस इज द शास्त्रिक इंजंक्शन सत्कर्मा निपुनो विप्रो मंत्र तंत्र विसृद अवेशनवा गुरुर्ना सयाद वैष्णव स्वा पचो गुरु ए स्कॉलरली ब्राह्मणा एक्सपर्ट इन ऑल सब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ वैदिक नॉलेज इज अनफिट टू बिकम ए स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर विदाउट बीइंग ए वैष्णवा बट ए पर्सन बॉर्न इन ए फैमिली ऑफ ए लोअर क्लास कैन बिकम ए स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर इफ ही इज ए वैष्णवा पदम पुराना पीपल आर in darkness and they have to be enlightened we have finally come from the animal kingdom to the human form and now this human form gives us the opportunity to get out of the cycle of birth and death the mission of this krishna consciousness society is to awaken people to their original consciousness jiva jaga jiva jaga gura chanda bale The word Gora Chanda refers to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wet who tells the living entity get up get up how long will you continue to sleep Kata Nidra yo maya pisachra kole the same is stated here it is the prime business of human beings to connect again with the supreme soul the purpose of yoga is to awaken to krishna consciousness and connect oneself 
again with Krishna, that is Adhyatmika Yoga. Yoga does not mean showing some mystic magic. The Supreme Yogi is described by Sri Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, stanza number 47. Yogi Nam Api Sarvesham Mad Gatentra Manana Shardhavan Bhajate Yomam Same Yukta Mataha and of all yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshipping me in transcendental loving service, is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. There are many yogis and many different types of yoga systems and all of these are discussed in Bhagavad Gita. There is Hat Yoga, Karam Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Raja Yoga. However, the real yoga system is meant for reviving our connection with Krishna. Here it is said, Yoga Adhyatam Mikaha Purusham. Adhyatam Mikaha. We are living entities, souls. It is not that we are disconnected from Krishna, but we have simply forgotten him. It is not possible to be disconnected, but it is possible to be covered. In the words of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, stanza number 25, Naham Prakashaha Sarvashya Yoga Maya Samvartaha Mudho Yam Nabhijan Loko Mam Ajam Avasyam I am never I am never manifest to the foolish and unintelligent. For them I am covered by my eternal creative potency, Yoga Maya, and so the deluded world knows me not, who am unborn and infallible. There is Yoga and there is Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya means forgetfulness. First of all, we have to understand what is the soul? At the present moment, people are in such darkness that they do not even understand the soul. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, stanza number 13, first of all, teaches what the soul is. Dehi no asmin yatha dehi kamram yovnam jara tatha dehantra parpatir dhiraj tatrana mukhyati As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. The self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. The word dehi means the proprietor of the body. We are thinking, I am this body, but actually this is not so. We are the proprietors of the body and that is the real understanding of the self. We do not say, I am this finger or I am this hand. Rather, we say, this is my finger, this is my head, this is my leg, etc. Similarly, the same can be said about the entire body. This is my body. This means that I am the proprietor of this body. The body has been given by Maya, the material energy. Parakartehe kriya manani gunehe karmani sarvasaha ahantkar ahamkara vimuddhamatma Kardham iti maniyate. The bewildered spiritual soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature thinks himself to be the doer of activities that are actual in actuality carried out by the nature. Bhagavad Gita chapter 3 stanza number 27. The living entity receives different types of bodies according to karma. 
one living entity may receive a cat body another a dog body and so forth why are there so many different bodies why not one kind of body the answer to this is also given in bhagavad gita chapter 13 stanza number 22 karnam guna sango saya sad asad yoni janmasu it is due to it, it is due to his association with the modes of material nature thus he meets with good and evil among various species because the soul within the body associates with three modes of material nature goodness passion and ignorance he receives different types of body one doesn't have to aspire for his next body one need only rest assured that it is it will be different body on the other hand krishna does not say what kind of body one will be awarded that depends on qualification if one associates with the mode of goodness he is elevated to the higher planetary system if he associates with the mode of passion he remains here and if and if one associates with the mode of ignorance and darkness he goes down to lower life forms animals trees and plants this is the proclamation of sri krishna in bhagavad gita chapter 14 stanza number 18 urdhvam gachanti satvastha madhye tisthanti rajasah जगन्या गुना विरति स्था अधो गति तम सहा दोज सिचुएटेड इन दी मोड ऑफ गुडनेस ग्रेजुअली गो अपवर्ड टू दी हायर प्लैनेट्स दोज इन दी मोड ऑफ पैशन लिव ऑन द अर्दली प्लैनेट्स एंड दोज इन द मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस गो डाउन टू द हेलिस वर्ल्ड्स देयर आर 8 लाख 80 four lakh species of life and all of these arise from one's association with the modes of nature karnam guna sango saya and according to the body one undergoes distress and happiness one cannot expect a dog to enjoy the same happiness that a king or rich man enjoys whether one enjoys this or that happiness or suffers this or that distress both distress and happiness are due to the material body yoga means transcending the distress or happiness of the material body if we connect ourselves with krishna through the supreme yoga we can get rid of material happiness and distress arising from the body reconnecting with krishna is called bhakti yoga and krishna comes to instruct us in this supreme yoga in essence he says just revive your connection <coughs> with me you rascal give up all these manufactured yogas and religious and just surrender unto me that is krishna's instruction and krishna's representative the incarnation or the guru says that the same thing although kapil deva is an incarnation of krishna he acts as the representative of krishna the guru if we just accept the principle of surrender unto krishna we will become actually transcendental to so called material happiness we should not be captivated by material happiness or aggrieved by material distress these are causes for bondage material happiness is not actually happiness it is actually distress we try to be happy by obtaining money but money is not very easily obtained and we have to undergo a great deal of a distress to get it however we accept this distress with the hope of getting some false happiness if we purify our senses on the other hand we can come to the spiritual platform real happiness lies in engaging our senses to satisfy the senses of krishna in this way our senses are spiritualized and this is called adhyatmika yoga or bhakti yoga this is the yoga that lord kapil deva is here in expounding so i conclude this chap this video here at this point please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel 
एंड नेक्स्ट वीडियो नंबर 11 विल स्टार्ट विद चैप्टर 8 भक्ति योगा द सुप्रीम योगा सिस्टम टेक्स्ट 14 थैंक यू नमस्कार